Well, I'm done filming. I released him, but he just wants to hang out by the Mohawk. And he tickles. He's tickling me. I'm not complaining. Hello, I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out the monarch butterflies, and yes, my favorite butterfly is the monarch, but if you had asked me in my teens or in my twenties, my ready-to-go answer would have been the Viceroy, Limonitis archipus. And while definitely its own distinct species away from the monarch, still, it so closely resembles our all-star, I knew that raising monarchs would have an episode for the Viceroy somewhere in its future. The Viceroy looks very similar to the monarch butterfly due to an evolutionary defense known as mimicry. When first learning about evolutionary theory in grade school, I really fell in love with some of these nuances and details like mimicry and camouflage, which are two different things in evolutionary defense, and the Viceroy is a brilliant example of both of them. As a caterpillar, small and vulnerable, rather than brandishing bright lines to warn off about toxicity, well, there's a different strategy employed, the form of camouflage, which usually might mean blending in with the background. In this case, not so much blending in, but just trying to appear like an inanimate object. And in the case of the Viceroy, that inanimate object is bird dung. A mostly black grayish pattern with a little blotch of white there in the middle. And then also instead of smooth skin, we got some really rough, almost random looking skin. Kind of like what a piece of bird poo might have. The Viceroy kind of blends in with its environment, not by blending in, but by kind of standing out as something you don't want to eat. And though it's mimicking bird poo, technically this is a form of camouflage. Evolutionarily speaking, camouflage is when an organism does attempt to blend in with its environment to try to just kind of look like the same background elements, whether that's some random things or an actual object like a leaf or a thorn or a rock or a piece of bird poo. And what's really interesting too is that the Viceroy is not the only butterfly that as a caterpillar stage has employed this type of evolutionary strategy to look like bird dung. Other caterpillars have independently evolved to do this too. Now, mimicry, however, that's when an organism has evolved to resemble another specific organism, usually for some type of deceptive reason that aids in defense. And while as a vulnerable caterpillar it might try to look like bird poo, when it decloses as an adult out of the chrysalis, it comes out looking very much like the monarch butterfly. That orange, black, and white coloration very much present and almost in the same pattern, making many to confuse it for a monarch at quick glance when it's flying by. Whether it's camouflage or mimicry, this organism is all about fooling others, but it doesn't end there. The Viceroy is a famous one for fooling even entomologists, and plenty of collections have had to be gone through to correct the mistakes of sometimes having a Viceroy labeled as a monarch. But also, Viceroy historically tricked a whole bunch of scientists once. For a long time, entomologists assumed that the Viceroy's mimicry with the monarch was a type of Batesian mimicry, where a harmless type of organism has evolved to resemble a more harmful, more dangerous, or better defended one. Because monarchs were already well known to be poisonous, having toxins built up from the milkweed that they eat. It was assumed then that the Viceroy was harmless and that it was just kind of a, a freeloader, a moocher, dressing up like a monarch to get the advantage of looking like one, while it didn't really contribute anything to the defense system. And after all, the Viceroy Caterpillar, it doesn't advertise, hey, I'm toxic. Instead, it's trying to, to hide as a piece of bird poop. And the host plant for the Viceroy Caterpillar, well, those are leaves of the willow tree family, not really known for their toxicity. But then, in 1991, a study was released that shocked entomologists. The thing is, yeah, the willow trees, they do have some amount of anti-herbivore toxins, a defense system that they do have. It's, it's just not as potent as milkweed. So it kind of flew under the radar. But the study was able to find that, yeah, viceroys do have some toxicity to them, built up from these kind of weaker toxins in the willow tree leaves. Well, birds that had never learned anything about the coloration due to monarchs, they eventually were able to learn from the viceroys what that coloration meant and were avoiding the viceroys, showing the viceroys did indeed have some sort of toxic, unpalpable taste to them. Surprise! Turns out the viceroy's mimicry isn't Batesian, but instead is a type called Mullerian mimicry. Mullerian mimicry is where two harmful organisms evolve to resemble each other for the cooperative benefit provided. In the case of monarchs and viceroys then, the viceroy having these orange and black colorations, well, it also gets to advertise just like the monarch does, hey, these two colors, orange and black, means don't eat me. I taste really bad, and I'm not worth the effort. And this animal then fooled a bunch of entomologists for several decades. That trickster. But still, how do you then tell them apart? Well, here, let me show you. Check out this chance occurrence that I had this summer with one.
see what we have here. Pretty skittish, won't let me get close. But maybe you can see the wings. It's not a monarch. We've got the look-alike. Here we have a viceroy. That band on the lower wing really gives it away. They're also significantly, on average, smaller than the monarchs. Ah, thanks for displaying that for me. Appreciate that very much. Now, I know it's tough to do without some sort of standard of measurement for comparison, but you might notice that the Viceroy here in this footage, it's, it's kind of smaller than that of Monarchs. Typically, Viceroys on average are smaller butterflies than the Monarch butterfly. Also, the way it flies, the wing flapping is different. For Monarchs being much larger with larger wings, it might just be one or two or three flaps and then some gliding happens. But with the Viceroys, there's a lot more flapping and continuous flapping involved. Still, even when it flew by me at this chance, I, I thought it was just a small Monarch at first. The dead giveaway is all about the hind wings. Not on the Monarch, but on the Viceroy, there is a curved line that kind of follows the hind wing's edge. Going right across those orange areas of the pattern, this curved line is a dead giveaway. You are looking at a Viceroy. Monarch butterflies never have this line. Also convenient for identification purposes, you can see that line easily whether the wings are open or closed. This line, once you've seen it and once you know about it, you'll never unsee it again. And this will keep you from misidentifying things out in the field or, or even at tattoo parlors. I'm sorry, but I will admit one of my guilty pleasures has been to look up Monarch Butterfly Tattoo in search engines or hashtags and see how many Viceroys have made it in there. They're out there. Life decision, guys. Double check stuff. But hey, if there is that rare chance you have fallen victim to such a tattoo kerfuffle, don't feel that bad. This organism was able to, in fact, pull the wool over the eyes of the Central Bank of Mexico. For several years on the 50 pesos banknote, the monarch migration was being celebrated on the back. For the first few years of its printing, a mistake was on there, and of the three monarchs that are on the back, well, two of them are viceroys. The mistake was noticed pretty quickly once they hit circulation, but still, it took a number of years before they could actually correct it and fix it. Even so, I made sure to pounce on it and get my uncirculated banknote, because I like to nerd out about things like that. So, this insect has a special place in my heart, and while not a monarch, it does take the crown, I say, still for best deceiver in the insect world. Not only does it trick plenty in the animal kingdom, but it's been able to play humans for the fool multiple times. But after this video, no longer will that include you. I'm Rich Lund, thank you very much for learning with me today, and for your interest in the monarch butterfly, and one of its lookalikes, the Viceroy. So until next time, I will see you later, and I got some releases here to do. Evolutionary mimicry at its best.